So in this demo, we're going to talk about the introduction on SharePoint Framework 1.21, which is uh, coming to preview. I'm going to talk about the timelines in a second. Uh, uh, before we go there, let's have a quick recap on what is SharePoint Framework so that everybody understands what is that all about. It's been around actually now for eight, more than eight years. Um, general availability had an anniversary on last Sunday for SharePoint Framework for eight years, which is actually quite mind boggling. What's really, really cool, it is actually, the usage is growing uh, rapidly still, which is really Really, really, really awesome to see. So, SharePoint Framework is the easiest way to build uh, your extensibility in Microsoft 365, in SharePoint, in Teams, in Microsoft Viva, in Outlook Microsoft 365 app, and future also in Copilot. There's more and more capabilities coming on Copilot, uh, which are getting a lot of, lot of getting that is getting right now built. We'll talk about all of that a bit later as well. But we already talked about, for example, the cards coming to Copilot, uh, as in the Viva Connection cards will be in Copilot, which are also powered by Share. Framework. Now, kind of a quick recap on the growth and the usage. Uh, so the usage is just mind boggling. Uh, so we kind of grow more than 300% uh, within the past few years. Uh, and this is all custom components built with SPFX across Microsoft 365. And the usage is growing, uh, which is mind boggling after eight years. Now, uh, the next steps uh, within the SharePoint framework uh, is basically the 1.21, uh, as mentioned in the title. Uh, 120 is currently the latest version, which we recommend to be used in the production for building any of the experiences for Viva Connection, SharePoint, Teams, and so on. Uh, 121, uh, the beta release will happen today. Um, however, we do might have a challenge on some of the schema files, so it might actually be slipped tomorrow. So you might actually see the versions in uh, in the NPM, but our schema files are getting uh, updated tomorrow. Uh, there's multiple teams behind of the scenes doing some work, and there was a misconfiguration uh, in some of this pipeline. But in this 121, I will do a live demo on this in a second and explain what they are. Is adding support for flexible layout configuration on SharePoint pages. We'll have a look on that one in a second. But basically, what it means is that for web parts, we're able to configure how they behave as you're using them in a uh, flexible layout, which are rolling out right now uh, worldwide to SharePoint Online. And I'll show a live demo on that one. And we also have a card configuration option for dashboard personalization. This is something which is coming to uh, Viva Connection. I'll talk about that one in second. Now for the technical updates, uh, we're looking into updating the Node.js version requirement on SPFX. If you are a technical, you're up to date on this. It's currently Node 18, which is a bit outdated, uh, but we're looking into updating uh, to Node 22, uh, uh, most likely by GA of 1.21 uh, because of the timelines and supportability and all of that. Now, Outside of SPFX, there's a lot of stuff actually happening related on that one. So card web part is coming to SharePoint. That should be coming pretty soon to preview within March timeframe. And also we have the SPFX and GoBot integration scenarios coming uh, really soon as well uh, in March timeframe. And then the larger functionality, which is getting built by engineers right now is SharePoint sites as apps and agents. This is something which we have 99% of our resources currently locked into which is why the 1.21 might seem like a, hey, there isn't that much uh, in here. There are small fixes, few features, but the, the reason for that one is, is that most of our uh, resources are focusing on the future uh, and the V next of all of this stuff. Uh, you will hear more about that one definitely as the time is right. Now, quick recap on, on the flexible layout things. Uh, I'll show this one in practice, like mentioned. But basically, starting from 1.21, developers can define the default settings for flexible layout behavior. For example, also blocking the web part not to be suitable to be used in a flexible layout. We'll have a look on that one in a second. But there's additional metadata settings in the meta, uh, metadata of the web part. So you're able to define those over there. And the second big thing uh, is something which we actually haven't yet talked about before this slide uh, is in in the Viva Connection, uh, we are currently rolling out or planning to start rolling out a new functionality where the users can actually start adding their custom cards directly to the dashboard. So rather than only supporting company and defining what are the cards which are available in a dashboard in mobile, tablet, and desktop, also, users can actually add the, uh, select to add additional cards within the, uh, within the dashboard, so that they can actually start having this personalization within the dashboard. Admins can lock down a few cards, and then the users can select which are the additional cards which are relevant for them, for example, for mobile use. Um, and this capability is uh, coming soon. Uh, and configuration options on this one is uh, soon to be available, or they are available in 1.21. Now, let's have a look on this uh, in practice. Um, and 
bit of a warning, we might go a few minutes long today, uh, but uh, uh, if you need to drop, uh, you can see the recording from the YouTube uh, later on. So first of all, uh, this is a SharePoint site which is using flexible layouts. So this is a relatively complex looking SharePoint site which doesn't necessarily look like a SharePoint site anymore because we can do actually much more beautiful stuff nowadays than previously we were able to do. Now, and portals as a still, I think communication is a big thing obviously in companies. I will change the page in edit mode and we can actually do a quick modification and analyze what these are. So this is a hero web part, for example. This one here, however, is actually flexible layout. So what it means is that as part of a normal section layout, if you're familiar with SharePoint page structure, you can actually have also flexible layouts and flexible layouts gives you this full flexibility of adding any web part or any control anywhere you want. And you can see the snappings and everything else in place, or almost like in PowerPoint. So we're able to see where the text would be actually aligning into, and you can just drop the web part over there. Uh, in this case, this is a text web part. That's a text web part. This is an image web part, and I can actually adjust things. I can actually absolutely put them in a different order. I can also select which of those web parts are in front, so I can adjust uh, the layout any way I want, and I have this full flexibility within the within the page uh, design. Now, the, the few things to notice here, uh, this is something which is lighting up uh, in existing pages as well. So if you go to the create a section, uh, you will actually see a new flexible layout section option. Let me zoom that one more time, only that one selected. So uh, for targeted release tenants, currently as we're recording this in end of February 2025, um, it's targeted release tenants, so tenants where the targeted release uh, setting has been enabled for the organization. This feature is currently rolling out. Um, and then you can just select uh, the flexible layout and that's where the layout is. And then I can actually start adding, uh, for example, web parts in. So let's have a stock image. Let's select uh, that's a beautiful looking cat. And I can just lay out that wherever I want. Uh, and then I can add additional links on there as well. So you have this full freedom again and resizing and all of those capabilities in place. And you're able to also adjust the height of that section any way you want. So you can, for example, lock down uh, it's to be a bit bigger. Let's look down over there and you can actually start doing really cool looking pages. We can add a text here, something like uh, cats are nice. We have two cats as well. We have two cats, two dogs and the two cats. It's full zoo in the worst case scenario, but uh, that's enough for my what's happened in my home. Uh, so now we can actually start overlapping these things. We can adjust things and all of that stuff as well. So it's it's basically have this full flexibility on doing things uh, with the layouts, which is really, really cool. Now, as an example, if I scroll down a bit more, uh, we have here an example on the research team. This is a flexible layout where I have uh, editorial cards in text cards, web parts, and an image. You can actually see here an interesting uh, dimension that section alignment doesn't look now good because of the size and, and shape of these images. And what I mean with that one is that you can see that these images are now aligned right next to each other. But to be able to make it look good, I could actually take those and just adjust or I could group them and I can adjust the one more pixel over there. Now there's a bit more safe space. I can then take that picture, uh, copy that uh, picture. Uh, okay, let's, oh, there we go. I didn't want to take that one and uh, let me get that one. Let me copy that web part. I can actually put it in here. Let's put it in this, this section. Uh, let's uh, duplicate that one as well. And I can really easily start aligning again uh, the information any way I want. Uh, and for example, add a fourth person here uh, from whatever is, is needed on the layout side. So let me actually select there. There's a good example of a one more nice layout editing in place. Cool. And maybe actually from a layout designing perspective, maybe that should go one more step here so it looks a bit more aligned. Well, it's beautiful. Anyway, so now what we then have within the SPFX 1.21, uh, the key difference is that we have this flexible layout sizing option settings. Uh, not a massive amount of settings, but it's more aligns on the default row height and white when you're track and dropping the web part in place. And also is that web part supported for dynamic resizing? So let me actually go, and that's done in the manifest of the solution. So let me go back on the page. 
let me go where the cats are nice and I do have a really simple web part here uh, showing you how this actually works. So I have a custom layout web part which I actually created uh, this morning uh, which actually also has the, the white information inside of it. So you can actually see how, how this actually behaves and the key point here to notice um, the white is dependent on the size of the layout within the flexible layout. So uh, all of the existing white uh, method, white for solving the how, how wide it is and how it should be actually rendering based on the responsive design rules is available. So you can see the web part wife getting adjusted uh, as well uh, dynamically based on the page. So you can actually start taking that into account within your implementation as well. But all of that is available now in, in 1.21. A flexible layouts option, uh, all of this flexibility and this layout are rolling out to uh, targeted release tenants uh, in this week uh, and, and they should be available 100% in targeted release tenants by next week when our hackathon is actually starting. So you can actually start creating uh, beautiful looking portals uh, also using the flexible layout option. And key point here to notice again, it's, it's a combination of existing layout options and flexible layout options. So you don't have to recreate any pages and content, you can start taking uh, the flexible layout into use in existing pages just by adding them in and then redesigning the pages as they are, which is really, really cool. Now, let me go back on slides. A few kind of an updates on 1.21 uh, SPFX. So Node.js upgrade, again, uh, we're looking into jumping directly to version 22 uh, by April, uh, which is the supportability, the supportability things for Node.js uh, with the versions, and we're looking into addressing that. Most likely, we will do this by GA version of 121. So we'll do the jump as part of that. There is unfortunately currently no ETA for React 19 support. This is something what technical people have been asking for us. Uh, we are still waiting for out of the box SharePoint online features to get updated on React 19 version. And before that is getting done, we cannot provide React 19 version, unfortunately, for our developers, which is really frustrating, but we need to wait for out of the box to update first. And there's a additional set of news coming, obviously, in uh, the Microsoft 365 community conference later this uh, spring. But that's a quick update uh, on 121 as a teaser. We'll provide more updates on that one as we get closer to the GA version, uh, and there will be demos and all of that stuff available for you to take advantage as well.